Hey there everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're doing the pedal board tour for the end of 2020. Um, I did one of these videos a little earlier in the year and it was a lot of fun. Uh, the board has changed quite a bit since that video. So I'm gonna kinda do what I did last time. I'm gonna walk through my signal chain and show you how I have everything ordered and organized. Um, I'm gonna talk about each pedal kind of give you some insight into how I use it and why it's there. Um, I do want to say that the board is very specifically set up for these kind of dark ambient songs I've been doing lately. You know, they're set up as kind of improvisational pieces. So the board's kind of arranged with that in mind. If I were, you know, doing something else or playing live or whatever, I might set it up a little differently. So just keep that in mind. It's it's set up really to kind of do uh, this certain type of music I've been doing lately. All right, that's enough. Without further ado, let's dive in and I'll show you what's on the board. Okay, so the first pedal in my chain hasn't really changed from last time, and that's the Digitech Freakout here. Um, it's a feedback generator, and I've talked about this a few times. But basically, it adds feedback to your signal. So it's like you're standing in front of your cranked amp and you let that feedback, uh, you know, fly in. Now, I normally have it set up in momentary mode. So it just, I'll, here, I'll play it so you can see what it does. I just have a little, uh, a little, for me, it's a little. I have a little bit of delay and a little bit of reverb going on right now. So that's how I tend to use it. I'll I'll use it to almost accent a held note or to just kind of fold it in to give tension. So it's a really, really expressive pedal in that regard. So from the Digitech Freakout, we go into the Analog Man King of Tone. Um, this is the V4 of the pedal. And it's got two channels. Each channel can be configured um, either via jumper or by this handy little switch here to be one of three things, an overdrive, a clean boost, or a distortion. I like the sound of uh, overdrive on the yellow channel and then you know, I was running distortion on the red, but I decided to go into and make it into a second overdrive. And I just, I like that better now. So it's just, it's less compressed and it's more open, but still gritty and gnarly. So, you know, here's the guitar without any overdrive on it, just going into the Iridium. Yellow channel. So that's a pretty light overdrive I have dialed in there. Um, and to be quite honest, I leave this on 99% of the time. I just like what it does to my guitar, makes it sound better. Now when you kick in the second overdrive, it just sounds, you know, nice and distorted and gritty, but without losing that kind of open character. I don't know if me saying that makes any sense, but that's just how I articulate it. Um, regardless, I love it. And, uh, you know, I don't buy a lot of overdrives. Uh, I have a small sound, big sound fuck overdrive that I'll sometimes put in just to kind of get a different sound and tone. But honestly, this overdrive, I like it enough. I haven't really you know, bought different overdrives in a long time and, you know, AB'd them and that kind of thing. Maybe one day I will, but for now, I just feel like uh, other pedals are more exciting to me. So I, I found one I love and I, you know, don't see myself replacing it anytime soon. So we leave the King of Tone and we go into a pedal I got for Christmas, which is the Polytune 3 TC Electronic Tuner. I'm not going to talk about it too much, except for to say I love how tiny it is and it allows me to put more pedals on my pedal board. And that's all I'm gonna say, because it's a tuner, you know what it is. Um, from there, we go into my Walrus Audio Deep Six compressor. And I do wanna say that, you know, I still really like this compressor. I haven't changed the settings on it significantly in a long time. I kinda like how I have it set up. Um, I do wanna mention that the light is starting to go out on it. It comes in and out and that's a major bummer because, you know, I sometimes have it on and I don't know it's on. So that kind of sucks. 
I don't know how to fix that. Um, maybe one day I'll try to do that or I'll send it in. Actually, I'll probably do that sooner than later. I do have the compressor after the overdrive. And, you know, some people will put the compressor first and some people will put it second. Um, you know, I at times I've sat there and really thought about it of like, oh, I want the, you know, I want the distorted signal compressed even more when I'm doing things with it later. Or, you know, I want a really compressed signal going into the overdrive so it's not too dynamic. I, honestly, I tend to not have them both on at the same time, so it doesn't really matter that much to me nowadays. I just have the compressor there because it fits on the board a little better. So we leave the deep six and we go into the procession reverb. Um, this pedal, I kind of only use it one way nowadays, and that is this 100% mix kind of pad reverb sound. So let me add some delay and reverb at the end of my chain because I normally don't run it just by itself. I mean, here's how it sounds by itself. But if you run into some other stuff. It gets far more ghostly. And then of course it's good for the kind of ambient pad, fast finger picking thing. which I really love um, because I feel like that builds tension in parts. So that's a really cool use for the pedal. Um, I do tend to leave it on the flange setting 99% of the time because I just like that long, slow sweep through it. Um, it just gives it some movement, but not in a way that I feel, you know, I feel like that movement doesn't really interfere with anything later in the chain. So that's very important to me. So we leave the procession and we go into a new pedal, the Time Shadows by Death by Audio and Earthquaker Devices. Um, this is one of the major pedal changes from last time I showed you the board. And I was going to do a demo on this pedal. And actually, I'd like to apologize because I said on my Instagram that I was going to do this pedal demo soon and it never happened um so I wanted to kind of explain that I made the demo I filmed it I was editing it and I decided I hated it I just it came out badly I didn't like the flow I didn't like how I explained it and I didn't feel like it was really adding a lot of value I just I didn't like my guitar playing on it just everything about it seemed to be bad okay so let's get into this my mini demo of the time shadows um so a couple things I want to talk about first of all I only have the overdrive on, so you're just going to hear the time shadows with a little bit of overdriven signal going into the iridium. So it's going to be pretty, pretty bare bones, right? Not a lot, not a lot going on in my guitar. Uh, the condor you will see is turned on, but it's basically disabled within the controls. So don't worry about that. Nothing is going on with the time shadows. Time shadows has two settings. One is the Earthquaker devices side and one is the death by audio side. Um, it's basically a delay pedal with a filter and it does a bunch of crazy shit, okay? So real quick, I want you to hear the Earthquaker side. Everything about this pedal is that filter. It just changes the character of it entirely, and even little incremental turns of the knobs will do quite a bit. Now, one thing about the Earthquaker side that I've noticed is you can, there's a bit of a delay between when you hit the note on your guitar and the sound comes in, it slightly swells in. So it's not, you know, it's almost like, um, it's almost like an octave pedal or there's that slight delay when you play the note and then the, the octave, you know, comes in. It's kind of like that. But 
This pedal is a weird and bombastic pedal. Um, it's big, it's pissed off, and it doesn't really play nicely with some other things. It's not subtle, right? But within that, it is very, very cool. So you can hear the delay. So time, obviously, is delay time. Span is almost like feedback. And the filter is this resonant filter that kind of goes through everything on here. So that's basically the, I, okay, that's not basically the Earthquaker device aside. That's a quick showing of some of the sounds it makes. I mean, as you turn that filter knob, this thing changes dramatically. And especially when you get down here near the lower settings. This is what I like. It gets dark. And just kind of creepy. So for the Earthquaker side, I actually keep it kind of around this setting where I have that filter turned way back. It's a really dark kind of in the background setting. Um, I really, really like that. Now let's check out the Death by Audio side. Way, way different sound out of this side. So that's less of a synthy sound and more of a just kind of straight delay sound. But there's nothing straight about this delay. So that filter knob on this setting, it's very, very sensitive. And because it has that little resonant bump, it... I oh, know it just adds a character to it. So if you dial it in in a, in certain ways, it just gets this very interesting sound that is I I have I can't really get it out of other pedals. So right there, you hear that resonant. Uh, filter, you know, filter almost kind of distorting and getting garbled and crushed. And just so you know, that's the sound my guitar has without this thing on. not suggest this pedal if you're looking for a delay you know like hey i want a delay pedal uh, i wouldn't get this because that's i mean it's a delay pedal but man i wouldn't use this as your main delay because it's just so weird and out there um but what it does is very cool it can get very out of control very 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 fast so if you have it dialed in and you're playing a lot of, like I've seen people, I've seen some people online playing with this thing and they're playing a lot of notes and it just can get very garbled and messy, which is cool at times, but I don't feel like that's the strength of this pedal. The strength is in the subtlety on this thing. That's my opinion anyway. And once again, I kind of like it on those darker settings, you know, where the where the filter knobs around there. Yeah, so very very cool. Um I do want to also mention with this pedal that there's a secret mode. Um I don't know if this mode is intentional or not, but let me show you what it does. Son of a bitch, won't do it when I'm trying to do the demo. Okay, so <laughs> you have to you have to get the the switch kind of 
in the middle of the pedal. So it's just like in between the two settings. And this is what it does. Yeah, it's almost like a hidden rainbow machine by Earthquaker devices. Um, I did not discover this. I saw another YouTuber talk about it. I don't remember um, her name, but I did not. She showed it to me. I didn't figure this out. Just want to say that. Um, but yeah, I don't find this setting particularly musically useful. Um, that's me. Some people may. I don't. Um, I do want to say also that with the uh, switch in the middle. Sometimes it doesn't want to go in the middle, so I wouldn't count on it. One thing I do want to mention is this pedal is dying to have an expression output on it because as you turn some of these knobs as you're playing, let me show you. So one thing to mention real quick, the filter on the Earthquaker side, I believe, is before the process signal. And on the DBA side, it's after. So that's why when you turn that filter knob, you hear it actually make a difference on the DBA side, not on the Earthquaker, to Earthquaker side. <laughs> Okay, so we leave the time shadows and we're going to go into the Super Ego Plus. Um, the main change I've done with this pedal is I was using the filter function to kind of cut off some of that high end because this pedal can be a little harsh. However, um, I decided that I wanted to take the sub and up off my board and have this pedal provide the octave shift that the sub and up was providing because the only time I was really using the sub and up was when I was dumping it into the super ego. So here it is with out the octave. And here it is with the octave. And of course, you can dial in also an upper octave if you want. Now this pedal can be harsh, so I'll either use the Condor here to control some of those highs. I'll also roll off the toe knob on my guitar to deal with that. or a combination. Okay, so now we leave the Super Ego Plus and we jump down here to the Montreal Assembly Count to Five. This is one of my all-time favorite pedals. I've done a bunch of demo videos on it, so if you want to know more about those, please check them out. Um, what I will say is... Okay, I tend to use this pedal in mode two for the most part, just because I like the options you have. I like the random feature. That's just 99% of the time I use it that way. And I really like to cascade it into the black fountain. So that's why these two are here next to each other uh, for that purpose there. So normally what I do with this pedal, just so you know, is especially when I'm doing these ambient songs, I'll... Unfortunately, it's a foot switch and I'm usually playing at the time. So what I'll do is I'll take a chord and I'll just kind of, you know, play around in it. And I'll have to use my toe to very awkwardly hold down the button so it'll record it, right? And that gives me something like this which I absolutely adore because that's just a, it's it's just a base from which you can make so many things. You know, I'll kick in the random 
And then what I'll do is I'll feed it into the black fountain and then feed it into other things further down the line. And I'm kind of starting to talk about the black fountain here a bit, um, but this is often what I'll do with it is I'll crank the mix on the black fountain and just mush this thing into kind of a creepy drone sound almost. Um, you know, I've played around with the other modes on the count of five, but really mode two is just the one I keep going back to. Um, you know, mode three is cool because you have, you know, three different playheads on it. But I don't know, mode two, for what I'm doing with the ambient stuff, I I just kind of want that, you know, simple garbled sound that I can start, you know, messing with later on down the chain. So that's the main way I use this pedal. I usually have random turned off, the length turned all the way up, and then the DIR knob set to where it's reversing it, but not changing the pitch. Sometimes I'll go down an octave or up an octave, but usually I'll just have it kind of set like that. And then I'll destroy the signal later on down the chain. So that's how I use the Montreal assembly count of five. Okay, let's get into the Black Fountain, which is right after the count of five. Now, the Black Fountain, it's a newer pedal I have. I want a dark, murky delay pedal here, and this thing has really done that. Listen to the repeats on this thing. So... And I think where this pedal really shines is when it has run into a brighter delay and obviously a little reverb. Something about the dark repeats going into the brighter repeats of a delay later down the line, they just, they just seem to work well together. Now, so I'm in the vintage mode on here right now. Um, sometimes I'll dump over to modern, but this middle mode, and I, I, I don't remember what the hell it's called. I'll put it up on the screen. Basically, it locks the delay time to a, sh to a fast delay time. Okay, so sorry, let me turn off the other delay. Okay, so let's get the mix up so you can hear it. So you hear that, right? I cannot change that in this middle mode that I don't remember the name of. So what happens in this mode is the knobs, the knob that normally handles the delay time actually deals with the modulation, okay? So normally, you know, normally I don't use a lot of slapback delay. I feel, I just, I don't know, it doesn't, I, I don't use it a lot, but I discovered that if you run that slapback delay into a brighter delay on the timeline later, it sounds really cool and really, I guess it subtly gives it more depth and space without getting in the way of the later delay. So. Okay, so from the Black Fountain, we then go into the Condor. Now, the Condor is an EQ pedal, and it also has some gain on board, so you can use it as an overdrive later on in your chain. Um, it's great for shaping your tone, and I have it here because I 
don't necessarily want it to impact anything further down. I mainly have it here because I want to control the frequencies coming out of that super ego, the time shadows, and the count of five, especially before they start hitting the loopers. Um, I do want to mention, however, that this pedal may be moving because I'm, I sometimes get these weird resonant frequencies when I've built up these ambient songs and I have a bunch of layers going on. And so I'm starting to think, well, maybe I should just have this later in the chain and then I can try to dial those out. But I don't know. I kind of like it here, but I'd also like it later. So I don't know what to do with it. Uh, for now, it's staying here because I just feel like it's in a good spot. Um... I don't really ramp anything on it. I don't really use it as a tremolo or any of the other functions. I just use it to kind of carve out frequency spaces and filter, you know, different playing parts. So as I make every new part, I'll just turn knobs slightly. I'll hit the low pass filter, maybe dial out some bass, you know, move around with the mids and that kind of thing. So I just try to, every guitar part, I try to change the frequency a little bit and I don't know if that's actually working but I feel like it helps everything kind of sit on top of each other a little nicer um, and I also do that in conjunction with you know rolling around on my tone knob on my guitar and also changing the pickups and and the volume knob and stuff so kind of behind the scenes I'm doing a lot of things to try to make all those layers fit together and work um unfortunately I don't really have a sense of if any of that is necessarily making that big of a difference or not I just kind of feel like it is so yeah condor eq fun stuff okay so we leave the condor and then we go into the ditto x2 looper um now this looper is here because we're about to enter loop land and I wanted a looper before the tri-parallel mixer and all the stuff it's doing um because basically what I'll do is and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm bouncing around a bit what I'll do is I'll kind of you know everything that the tri-parallel mixer does I kind of have that going first and then at the end I'll add something to this ditto x2 here so that'll be kind of a last thing to put on top and then I can man manipulate it with the cool effects that it has on here, it's got the half speed and the reverse and all that. So I can start playing around with that at the end of the song. So that being said, we go from the ditto into the tri-parallel mixer. And here's where things get complex. And by the way, I did not come up with this concept at all. Um, there's a, a guitarist named Andy Othling that... Uh, had you know this parallel mixer thing going on in all these loops and I saw him do it and I thought oh my god that looks amazingly cool I want to do that as well and so I've kind of run with that but he definitely gave me the idea I did not so I just wanted to say that I did not come up with this so the tri-parallel mixer is a parallel mixer and it's set up into three different looping areas and it allows me to mix them in fade them in um it's got independent send and return knobs which is really really helpful as when you know when you're doing these kind of ambient compositions and you're you're doing it on the fly and you're doing it it you know it's all improvised so you kind of need a lot of control over the different parts okay so the tri-parallel mixer has three loops on it and a goes into blooper here so Blooper is a pedal that, if you want to find out more about, people have done exhaustive demos on it, and I'm not going to repeat a bunch of that stuff here. Um, but basically, you know, I'll take all these sounds that I'm creating earlier on, I'll feed them into the Blooper, and then at that point, I will begin to manipulate them with the uh, modifiers that are on there. I am going to say, however, that I have been very, very lazy about this pedal. So, you know, it has an additive mode, which is very, very powerful and does this cool shit. And I have barely ever used it. So one of my kind of goals going forward is to get better with this pedal and start doing some ramping on it and start using the additive mode. Okay, so then we go into loop B on the parallel mixer, and that is the Strymon timeline. So I have this set up not as a delay, but as a looper. And I have it in the sound on sound mode. Um, normally I have the tape age 
around you know nine o'clock eight thirty eight somewhere in there repeats are almost maxed to max and wow and flutter i tend to leave off and at those settings this thing will start degrading it but not too fast if you have these things cranked it'll degrade so fast that it it just it gets out of control um but it degrades in a very musical and beautiful way and then i'll play around with the time knob during the performance um and then i'll you know obviously use the parallel mixer to feed it in and out and that kind of thing so i've done a demo on this pedal uh so if you want to look at how the uh, looper works uh you can look back at my video history and you'll see that but yeah that's why this is here Okay, and now we're getting to the third loop, which is the Mood into the Warped Vinyl. Now, here's the story behind that. So the Mood pedal, you probably know what that is. It's this crazy kind of sampler micro looper pedal. And I love this pedal so much because it is, it's just the most chaotic, random, creative thing in the world. It's so beautiful and you really never, I, I, okay. I feel like, I feel like there's people who probably understand this pedal a lot better than I do and maybe really understand how it works, but I never feel like I, I approach this pedal knowing what it's going to give me. I just kind of play random stuff until I, it does something that I like. And you know, obviously the best way to use this pedal is to just let it kind of be it be itself, right? So I tend to have it set up in the stretch mode on the right side. And then on the left side, I will mix that around. Sometimes it'll be in slip, sometimes reverb, sometimes delay. It just depends on my, my mood that day, right? But this kind of sound you're hearing, this is why I tend to do with it. I get this kind of stretched out crazy sound. I do find that I like this thing being garbled a bit, and that's why I like the warped vinyl here. The warped vinyl, this is the V1, so I've had this pedal forever. I bought this, you know, when Chase Bliss first started selling them, and I absolutely love the pedal, but I just, I don't know, it just for some reason hasn't been on my board for a long time and it was kind of sitting in the background collecting dust and I don't know one day I was like oh I wonder what the mood would sound like going into that well you can hear so it just adds the modulation on the warp vinyl just adds this kind of dark character to it it gives it a little more movement I don't know, it just makes it more beautiful so these two pedals pair together really really nicely I'm going to say that my laziness with blooper I feel is also translating to mood and warp vinyl because I've been lazy about ramping and I feel like ramping the warp vinyl would probably be a good idea and I'm not doing that right now and I probably need to do that um, and maybe do some ramping on the mood as well Okay, so then all those sounds leave the parallel mixer. So you've got the Mood and the Warp Vinyl doing something, the El Capistan doing something, and the Blooper doing something. Those are all mixed in. And then the Ditto at the end is probably doing something as well. And all that is going into the Iridium. Now, the Iridium, I have it normally set on the Fender setting. <laughs> but I also will use the Marshall setting at times. Pretty basic. I mean, you know, I, the thing I love about the Iridium is it sounds and feels a lot like an amp to me and just the overdrive pedals really play well into it. Um, I just, it's, again, it's changed everything. Unfortunately, my amp is collecting dust as a result of the Iridium. I just love that pedal so, so much. So 
normally this is where I go stereo. So normally I'll go stereo out from the Iridium into the timeline, stereo out into the night sky, and then stereo out into my interface. One reason I like the timeline at the end of my chain, uh, besides the fact it sounds absolutely amazing, is because it has so many different delay modes. You know, sometimes it's nice to just switch that up a bit and it gives you just kind of a, you know, subtly different overall sound to the whole composition. So, you know, lately I've been using it a lot as in the D bucket setting. As just kind of a, you know, degraded analog delay sound. Okay, then we leave the timeline and we go into the night sky. Um, I've done a pretty comprehensive demo on the night sky, so if you want to know more about it, please check that out. One thing I do want to mention is I haven't decided on, I guess, a favorite patch or a favorite setting for this thing. Um, it does so many different sounds. I just, every time I turn it on, I tend to just force myself to either find a preset or, you know, mess around with the knobs till I get something I like. So I'm still exploring this pedal, even though I've had it for a while. It just, it's, it's very, very deep and complex and it sounds absolutely beautiful. One thing I've been doing lately that I think sounds pretty cool I wanted to show you is um, I will dial in the shimmer knob uh, as I'm playing. So at times I'll change the frequencies and also the vibe of the sound. So here's a basic loop. I just wanted to let you hear this. So that's blooper going into the timeline and I've got the reverb turned off now. I'm gonna turn it on and then feed in the shimmer so you can hear it. Now, right now, there's no shimmer on this reverb. All right, everyone, that's it. Thanks so much. Um, if you hear purring in the background, my cat Sophie has decided to enter and sit on my lap. So if there's background noise, excuse me for that. Um, I just wanted to talk about my plans for the channel going forward. So my plan is that I'm going to do a video at the minimum once every two weeks for the rest of the year, or I'm sorry, for next year, for 2021. Um, I'm going to try very hard to put out a video every single week, but the way my schedule in life is, that's sometimes not possible. I'm going to do my very best. If I could do a video every week, I'd be very, very happy. So I'm going to try for that, but at the very least, it's going to be once every two weeks. I'm going to be doing more of the ambient music. I'm going to be doing more pedal demos. Ideally, I'd like to do one pedal demo every one to two months. For me to do a pedal demo, there has to be something about the pedal that I feel like I'm adding to the YouTube community. I'm, you know, giving information that no one else has given, or I'm doing it in a way that no one else has done. So, you know, that's why maybe you haven't seen me demo every pedal on my board, you know, like the blooper, for example. A bunch of people have done some really great demos on that pedal, and I just don't feel like I'm necessarily going to make something that's going to add to that base of knowledge, right? That being said, if there's a pedal on my board that you want to know more about, or there's a question you have, or you want me to demo something, leave it in the comments. I read them all and um, I will, you know, probably do that demo. Um, I hope you all have a great holiday season, whatever holiday you, you celebrate. I hope it was wonderful. Please be safe for the New Year's and I will see you next year with a lot of great content.